As we complete the final chords of the National Anthem, we get ready for the Day 2 semi-final session. We'll have the final later on this afternoon of the 3C State Wrestling Championships. 3C AA State Wrestling Championships here at Cuesta College at San Luis Obispo. Uh, exciting first day. Right now, number one, Cerritos is still number one, but only by one point over Fresno City. Uh, Mount San Antonio not too far back. And third and the host Quest Cougars kind of had a rough day from what they were hoping for, but still in fourth place in, in, in the contention. I'm joined here by, I'm Peter Schuler. I'm joined here by Bob Mariucci, the athletic director at Cuesta College. So, Bob, you know, big times yeah. here. Uh, we have a couple of wrestlers in the state, in, in the championship heat with Connor Pollock and Joe Els. Yeah. Um, a big sophomore group, uh, Cougars uh, qualifying nine wrestlers for the state championships in the twi- 10 weight classes. And we're getting ready now, the first semifinals in the championship round. As I said yesterday, Pete, we had a, we had a great first morning, and then yesterday uh, uh, had, a, had a pretty good afternoon, but uh, we're excited about the f- uh, semifinals here today. So. And our first f- first championship semifinal here. Uh, we've seen or- Ornolf- Arnolfo uh, Olea came here for to wrestle against Cuesta in a dual meet. Uh, now he's up against Cerritos' uh, Garrett Howe at the 125. These are the uh, this is the lowest division in community college. Yeah, there'll be some and good matchups here this morning. I'm sure there's a lot of rematches that, that have taken place over the year. These these guys probably have met in the finals several times already this year. This is, the cream seems to rise to the top here. 125 pound weight class right now. We have just the one championship semifinal here go, going. Right now, Oleo seemed to get get a little riding time. Keeping Howe under control. His two-point takedown has are the only point so far. And here's that other match that got, got started too. So here. The other championship is, is uh, Gio Castillo and Adrian Camposano, but we will stick with uh, Olea and Howe for now. Uh, these are the, t- the top two teams in the state <laughs> and top two of the top wrestlers in the state uh, here from Fresno City and Cerritos. And Olea is inverted, but still in control. As uh, Yeah, I was still struggling, start trying to break free. Two of the top kids are, happen to be from Fresno City, which is, uh, you know, like I said, they could end up meet, meeting up in the finals, possibly. Well, I think that's one of the new things they've added this year is, is teams are allowed to take more than one wrestler to two uh, weight classes only. And when you have 19 schools left uh, competing in wrestling right now, and it is growing, at least on the women's side. Uh, of course, I had two women's wrestlers this year, and, and in fact, it had wrestlers go on to scholarships at a in the Midwest as women. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of talent backed up. So if you only take one, it's kind of unfair to the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the wrestler. No, you're who, right. could, who could be the number two wrestler in the state, but number two in his room as well? <laughs> yeah, Cuesta had two at 149, and they could end up meet, meeting up today, but it didn't, didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, we had two kids at 149. and So Alea is still controlling. And how just cannot seem to get free. There's still 32 seconds left in the first period. There's three periods. First period is three minutes. The second two are two minutes long. It is seven minutes of grueling physical <laughs> work out there. And uh, it's not any easier on the b- bottom as it is on the top. You're struggling even even in the stalemate. Yeah, and this match that we're watching right now is the, the number two seed and number three seed. So these two kids are seeded and ended up uh, wrestling together. The other semifinal match on the other uh, one is the number one seed and the number four seed. And finally the break. The winners of these oh. two matches will end up in the finals tonight at 7 o'clock, which is uh, the state championship, and uh, so there's a lot on the line with these so two Ale- matches. So right Alea gives away his, his advantage right there, and he goes for a neutral start. And again, another... T- he is given the takedown. 
So he got his second takedown. He's got a 4-1 lead. Just off the mat. They have to be completely off the mat for the referee to bring him back to the center. So sometimes that can be a good tactic. If you're getting in this bad spot, at least restart back in the center of the mat. You see Alea still got his foot in the foot in the ring. And now we'll move back to center. Leia bulldozing Howe outside of the ring again. And Leia with another takedown. He's really controlling Howe. And he's going to give him a release him again. So a one point escape for Howe. And Leia is going to look for another takedown. And, and he gets it. Yeah, he's really good on his feet. Good takedown uh, techniques, and so he's kind of just kind of getting some points. Right up like to take take position, shot, controlling him, going from head on to hard set up, hard shot. picking up his riding time some more, and we go in the final seconds of period number two, and he gets some back points. Could not get Howe all the way down, and we'll go to the third period. Alea with a commanding control right now, 11-4. And he's looking like he'll be in the state championship meet later on this evening. howe has got a long way to go. Down seven points. And he's locked in again. And see how quickly Alea gets into a controlling position here. He goes for another takedown. Down they called. So we will have 20 semifinal matches this morning, two at a time. Right now we still have, have we are focusing on How and Olea, and Castillo and Capasano are both on the other mat. Another matchup, that's that's another Fresno res wrestler, Adrian Capasano, uh, against Gio Castillo at Mount Sac. And currently in control over there is, is Capasano, so it could be an all Fresno final here. <laughs> I think Again. that's how they ended their regional, too. The regionals last week uh, in the north were those, these two kids. Right, they both did have a first round bye, so... Well, maybe because uh, Aaliyah it was a higher seed, maybe he, he had won that like regional last week. Right. The one and two wrestlers from both both regions got a, got a first round bye yesterday. And uh, here they are, one and two in their room again. and could, could be one and two in the state. Flip-flop, it could be the different way or could be the same. There's definitely a familiarity, and if you wrestle with somebody all day long, they, every day, <laughs> they may learn some of your tricks. Yeah. So it's uh, and on those far mats, Pete. That's that's the first round of consolations. That right, must that's be, right. Those the wrestlers just off the screen on the other side of the gym. They are in the third place bracket. The loser of this bracket of these matches will move into that third place bracket against the winners over there. Mm -hmm. Eight places are ruled are uh, given out, medaled in eight places. And there you go, Alea has. Earned his way into the finals with a 16-5 win over Garrett Howe of Cerritos. 
And we have, still have a minute 20 seconds left if we can see if we can slide over to the slide other over to the other semifinal match with the Fresno City. And we'll see here as, as Capasano and Castillo wrap up to see who will go into the finals against Alea. 50 seconds left in the third period in this match. Uh, At this time, it does five. look like an all Fresno City as Camposano has a 11-5 lead with 40 seconds left. For the final team standing, that's big for Fresno City too because if they can have two kids in the finals, they're going to get points for first and second. Uh, regardless of the winner, so this will be a big, big morning for Fresno City right now, if he holds on. And of course, Cerritos is a how will go into the third place bracket, and of course, no, no guarantees there because they have a lot of wrestlers who have been fighting their way back through the losing bracket after losing one match to go wow. to third place. He's being aggressive. He's trying to get back in this match. So game two takedown and one, one escape. So. <laughs> Mount Sachs going after it. So Gio Castillo picks up three quick points. And Camposano picks up one on the escape. He's going to go for another takedown, but Castillo seems to be a little bit out of gas right now. Yeah, a little too much. <laughs> it's a little too wide a gap. So that sets up our finals uh, this evening. We'll be in all Fresno City at 125 with... Arnolfo Olea and Adrian Camposano. So two guys who have been in the room together all year long. Uh, finished 1-2 in the NorCal Regional. They will be battling it out for state. So big win there for both teams. Coming up next, we'll stay on, on the north mat there, 133. And then we'll, we'll be having Sacramento City's Albert Landeros. And it looks like uh, Alberto Garza from, uh, or Garcia from Palomar. All right, and on the other mat, underway already, is Vincente Hernandez from Fresno City and Dustin Kirk from Cerritos. So again, Fresno City and Cerritos had a dominant first day. Um, both teams almost 20 points ahead of the third place team. And only a point apart. <laughs> right. So this match right here on the on the far corner, Fresno Cerritos, that's another big matchup right now for, for team standings because Every, everything going, is yeah. going right to the state championships. Yeah, it's been a great great event so far, Pete. Uh, Cuesta College has been a, a good host and this, this gym is big enough to host this large of an event and spread out and uh, so we've gotten a lot of good feedback on it uh, on the event. So well, I mean, let, let me ask you about this one, Bob. Uh, this is the first state championship for a school that's in the center of the state. I know we had the festivals, and they were all in Fresno. And the, is this something that you're going, you and the coaches are going to try and do a little bit more often? The center of the state, you can, you can yeah, should be and make everybody happy. We didn't have the best weather, but we didn't have any worse weather than <laughs> anybody else. This yeah, time. but this is the first state championship we've had here in 15 years. Yeah. We, we'd certainly like to. we certainly like to. Again, the location is appropriate for north and south, and um, so we had some good feedback from, from this last couple days. So right now, Garcia and Landeros. Kind of feeling each other out here early in the match. This other match is going to be a tight one right now. It's two to one, and it's going into the second period. Um, I wonder if we can switch back to that one just to check that out for a minute. But uh, looks like a good matchup. So we are kind of looking here if we we can see who, who's going to win here between Sacramento City's. Albert Landeros and Albert Garcia, Alberto Garcia from Palomar. Uh, that could be our first non-Fresno City person in the state championships. Is on the other side right now, it looks like Hernandez. We've seen wrestle very well here at Cuesta earlier this year. Uh, is doing his job. 
has a narrow lead in his match. And still no points over on the other on our side here. As Landeros and Hernandez are still kind of working their way out. Landeros gets a hold of Hernandez. Whoa. But no scores yet. A lot of movement, a lot of crossing <laughs> around. <laughs> and Hernandez almost, almost. He does get him. He does get him. Yeah, that's what I like so about these lighter. For Hernandez. These lighter weights are so active. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun wrestling to watch. And Hernandez has control of the ma match right now. He's trying to get some back points. Did not quite get Landeros over. And he does get score some back points. So Landeros up now, 4 nothing. Well, my mistake, Garcia is up 4 nothing. Landeros was on the bottom there. So San Diego to Sacramento right here. Palomar versus Sacramento City. Referee Doug Perrin explaining some things over to the uh, Sacramento City coach. A little delay there as we get ready as everybody's adjust their... Garcia is on top. He's in control right now. Jeez, very good movement right there. Very quick by Landeros. He gets his escape. So four to one. Four right, one right now. 30 seconds left in that first period. And Landeros chases Garcia out of the mat and they come back to center. And Landeros takes control. Good match so far. Good and match. At the end of the first period, it's 4 3. Landeros is quick takedown. And we take a quick peek over the other side, and we see. So I think Cerritos is Cerritos up. Cerritos is taking the lead. <laughs> Justin Kirk with the. 4-2 lead. Cerritos. And Kirk advances to the final. So Cerritos is in the finals. Dustin Kirk takes it down Vincente Hernandez. Well, that's a big win for Cerritos because I think that Kirk came in as a fourth seed. So he upset the number one seed. And we're having a tough time getting restarted here in the second period. I don't know if you noticed A couple this. of false starts and a caution issued by uh, official Doug Perrin. They put two officials on these semifinal matches now this morning. They, they've had a fi you know, one official throughout their weekends, but for these uh, semifinals and finals, they'll start having two officials that uh, officiate these matches. Landeros getting some more riding time, trying to erase what was built up by Garcia. And his Sac City Panthers are just, just right there in fifth place. Actually, in the fourth place tied with 47 points yesterday with Cuesta College, the host school. Grab on the head right there. Perrin puts an end to that and brings it back. Landeros is in control. Garcia is still winning, though. Landeros. 
And the match we've already gone to 141s on the other side with Terrell Sidner from Mount Sac and Trent Nicholson from Sierra going at it. Both number one seeds out of the region. 141. Uh, at 141 and then following this Lenderos Garcia match we'll have Quest's first wrestler Connor Pollock coming up on our mat here. And Landeros with another takedown, and we've evened the match. It could come down to writing time with 24 seconds in period number two. He's going to get it back to even here in a moment. Now people need to realize that if you, if you have one minute of control riding time, you get an extra point. So as the match goes on, you know, a, a wrestler could accumulate an extra point for controlling the guy more for more than a minute. And then an escape right there for Garcia, and he takes back the lead. I believe the riding time is even right now or at least it's under a minute, so there's no riding time in this. It's a one-point lead, and we go to the final two minutes. It's been a good match. It really has. They've been going back and forth the entire time. And right now we have Landeros down. If he can escape from Garcia, we'll be even up again. So, <laughs> And I'm sure he's going to be quick off this at the start yeah. here. I think we're going to see a very explosive start. Garcia controls that ankle and is trying to get back his riding time. And Daryl tries to roll out, cannot get out. Now a little hand fighting, he gets through, and oh, we're even up go. again. So one minute and 40 seconds left in this match to see who goes to the state finals. Oh. Oh, game two takedown. And Garcia gets the takedown. As long as that foot stays in bounds, as long as you have a toe in bounds, they, you can wrestle outside the ring. So that that uh, that uh, counted as a takedown. Oh no, he didn't give it to him. Who yes, did he did. It? It's eight six. No, I don't know. They, I think they didn't. They actually didn't give it to him. They gave it back out. Six, six. Oh, I guess they did. They did end up saying that toe was not in. <laughs> that's why you have two. <laughs> that's why you have two officials today. I guess it's like instant replay. So minute five, and we're still tied. Oh, that game. That match is over. Terrell Sidner advanced over there in the other bracket. He's our first 141 in the final. There's still a minute five left in this. Yeah, so on the other map, Mount, Mount Sac advances one to the state. Uh, Tyler state Sidner finals. will be in there. So our south mat is, is advancing a little bit quicker than our from North Matt. Hey, Connor Pollock's coming up here now for Cuesta College here very soon. Yeah, he's, so he's going to be our next uh, our next match. I, he's scheduled to be on the on this side over here. Yeah, I think they're as we're wait, that as, way we're, as yeah. we're waiting for uh, Garcia and Landeros to figure out who's going to win there. With 39 seconds left, we remain tied, and we go to the, on the other side. We go to the 141 side. We have Anthony. AJ, we have AJ McKee and Brian Sergi, Cerritos and Sac City. Sac City. As we start the 149s on that side, and we're still working on 133 on our mat, but we do have another takedown, and oh, wow. Garcia is back up too, and going oh. the riding time with 14 seconds left. All he has to do is <laughs> not get pinned. Oh, and we have, geez. we do have the one point escape. Oh, he tried an attempt. <laughs> and Garcia holds on match. to advance. So <laughs> Alberto Garcia, last few seconds, takes the lead back. 
the lead he had at the beginning of the match. And finally got it back. And uh, he'll advance to the finals. He'll be going against Cerritos' Dustin Kirk for state championship later on this night. That was a good match. And now we got our Quest of College, uh, Connor Pollock, coming up. So coming up to finish the 141 bracket, we, as we already said, Terrell Sidner of Mount San Antonio College has advanced after beating uh, Trent Nicholson of Sierra. And now the other half of the 141 bracket, Isaiah Alva from Fresno City, as many of these guys seem to be, and <laughs> Connor Pollock from Quest College, one of two Quest wrestlers who are in the championship bracket. We're going to stay on this north mat with Quest's Connor Pollock. So do you recall the, when we wrestled Fresno City this in a, a year in a duel, these two wrestle? Or? Right, right, exactly. A very good match. Um, so the battles continue. Uh, on the other side, we do have A.J. McKee, who was, his father was a two-time undefeated state champion, and he's trying to make, get there to himself against uh, Brian Sergey of Sacramento City. So again, Connor quick out of the blocks. Trying to go in after right. Alva. All right, starting off aggressive. That's what he needs to do. Two of the finest wrestlers in the state at this weight class right now. A little different in body build. Alva's a little bit taller, a little lankier. Pollock okay, is using nice, his power nice. to his advantage right now. Alva's got him in a headlock as, <laughs> as Pollock tries to drive him into the mat. So they get two takedowns. And, and Pollock is ball. really p piling up the points early. As he takes a 5-1 lead. And a one-point escape is given to Alva. Now, Bob, talk to me a little bit about this. You know, you, you, this, you have the length here with Alva, the strength with Pollock. And usually in that kind of matchup, is that, how would that change your strategy if you were going against somebody who was taller, lankier than you? Or, yeah, they both or were you either tall, lanky guy or were you the strong Probably the taller, guy. skinnier kid. Okay, yeah, that was you. I think, I think <laughs> they do use a little use, bit more leverage. You know, so tell me what Alva's using here. Yeah, he had a little bit more leverage. Like uh, maybe when he's on top, he's going to have a little bit more uh, legs to put in and control him. You know, but Connor is a little bit lower to the ground, a little bit more powerful. So, uh, you know, they both have their advantages. And, and like you said, two different styles. Um, you know, both have their advantages. I, I, you know, but Connor again, a strong kid. You know, he's going to be able to kind of get underneath him a little bit more. And um, He oh. certainly, certainly had a good Another start stalemate. Right there. They're just locked in together right there. Connor Pollock out of Folsom. He's the second year here at Cuesta. State qualifier last year. Two-time first-team all-conference. He's got one of the best winning percentages in Cuesta history. He's, when he gets in a match, he does well. And again, the winner of this match goes to the uh, state finals tonight uh, at 7 o'clock here. Last year, last year, Pollock struggled a little bit. He has wrestled at 141 all season long, dropped to 133 for the regionals and state. Didn't place. Uh, this year, he stayed more comfortable. I think he's he's uh, built up s some extra muscle and, and been able to be real lean at 141. And he's been a uh, top one, two, or three wrestler all year long. So in the SoCal Regional last week, he placed uh, second in the regional. Right, and he earned himself a bye this week. He's Quest's top finisher at the regionals. And he, he muscles Alva out of bounds, and they'll go back to center. Uh, Alva's actually, I, I guess the advantage of Alva being so long, he is automatically off the mat if you get him out of the <laughs> <ring>. <laughs> Yeah, Connor's not holding back. He's so going. He's 16 going. 16 seconds it. left in this first. And these wrestlers have seen each other plenty of times this year. And almost back points. Pollock, he's got Alva on his back. He's going to drive through. Oh. And Alva saved by the bell. He is. He was just holding <laughs> on to. If uh, Pollock had been able to get his head up, he could have gone chest to chest and had had Alva down. Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> Alva made sure he did not let go of. of uh, his little cranium hold right there. <laughs> That's a good first period. Excellent. So commanding lead right now for Pollock. You know, 
it's not a lead, especially at this level. You do not sit on a lead even if it's 10-1. You've got to try Absolutely. and Absolutely. Because Alv is too talented a wrestler for you to stall for five, four more minutes. So, uh, so if we go back to the other match, the Mount Sac, uh, uh, Sidner had won that the, the top part of that bracket. So that's uh, he'll be in the finals. Uh, did, did the Mount Sac and uh, Connor face each other last week? I'm, I'm trying to think in the regionals. Mount Sac and Cuesta. I don't have the re regional bracket with me, but it's, it's tough to imagine them going to the finals and not seeing each other at some point. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> it'll be Green's choice. <laughs> not the best, not the best flip right there. And Paul could take it on top. He's going to keep working on that riding time. Right now, he only has 17 seconds. And Pollock's still controlling Alva. Alva trying to earn an escape. A little hand fighting right there. See, this is where you're going to see the difference in the length. Right, you, you, can't, you can't get a... It's tougher for Pollock to try and get a throw on, a, <laughs> yeah. a throw on somebody yeah, who's... Yeah, see, you may not be able to hold him because he's a little bit too long. Yeah. So Alva picks up a point. One point escape. Pollock no longer has control. Alva. Pollock's shot. Alva seemed to trying to get control himself right here. He cannot get his hips around right now. If he can break Pollock's hold, he can get his hips around and get a takedown for himself. But we have a stalemate. Wow, and we go back to center. So yeah. that was <laughs> Pollock was Connor was holding on for dear life right there. If he had let him let him get around, that would have been easy points for Alva. But Pollock still 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 shooting. Still trying, still the more aggressive wrestler, I'd, I'd say, this whole match. Yeah. Has been Pollock. Now, w maintaining that for the next three minutes is going to be important. And Alva again, trying to work around, trying to work around. And he, Pollock cannot get a hold of him. He's using his length right there to keep himself wide, and he gets two points on a takedown and brings the match to 10 4. Pollock back up to his knees. And Alva has at least, with that takedown, erased the riding time that, that Pollock had, had accrued. He got warned for stalling on the bottom. So Pollock not, not doing enough down there, according to the officials. And we're into the third period. Still a big lead for Pollock. But like you said, you have to still, two minutes is very important. Now you got to wrestle a smart match. And you, you know you're up by six. You know, you got to make sure you, uh, you know, wrestle a smart match. Maybe not, you know, don't get conservative. Continue to be aggressive. And Looks like a little bit of blood on the mat. So, of course, we'll take our every precaution we can. And over on the other side, as we take a quick break over there to look over at 149, what's happening over there, A.J. McKee and Brian Sergi from Sacramento State City are still going at it. Again, McKee, only one loss this year. He was the SoCal champion. That is, that is on the north mat, right, or south mat right now. Uh, we're, we're looking at McKee, and as we wait for the third period to start with Pollock, as they clean up all the blood. <laughs> all right, here they go. Here they go. And here we go. We're back over here. So an important uh, last match. Uh, Pollock's going to take him as a neutral start. Oh, so Connor had the choice there, huh? As far as that was his neutral. choice again. It was green choice. And again. Alva trying to quickly use his, his length to get around, but Pollock is using his strength to hold him. So it's length versus strength here in this final final one minutes and 30 seconds left in this match. Alva needs a lot of work. He needs a takedown or a pin at this point, at least maybe two takedowns. 
and he's got one here. So it's 10-6, just over a minute left. He's going to have to release him if he's going to get more points or go for the pin. So we'll see if Pollock can hold on. Yeah, we're Pollock rushed out to a 10-1 lead in the first period and has held on. It was outscored 5-0 by Alva in the second period. Or 4-0, now it's another two points. We're down to 40 seconds. Can Pollock hold on and earn himself, take that first quarter, first period into, into the uh, into the finals? Did they give a point there for, uh, what, it went 10-7? Was there just a point I think for stalling? you just called him for stalling. So... So that's a second stalling call. So one point to Alva on a stalling. Pollock not being putting in enough movement down there on the bottom. But Alva's gonna have to, to cut him loose here if he's gonna or go for the pin. Three point lead, 25 seconds left. I see Connor's gotta be at least show some of the aggressiveness with the not getting another stalling call because I think now I, I think I think Pollock ex expected to come out. He did come out fast and furious in those ten that ten point first period. How much of himself did he did he spend? How See, he gets another, another point. There's another stalling call. Okay, so, so he's got three two. Is he gonna make it? Yeah. Whoa. Good job. And he gave him oh. another stalling point. Another and it's one. Ten nine. Pollock. Wow. <laughs> well, you show how much energy he used out in the get-go. That, that first I, period, know, he had not much left there in the, in the final final seconds. But that 10-point wow. that first period, and he held oh off the 10-9 ten, ten lead. Four points awarded to Alva for stalling on Pollock in those last two periods. So I think the next song, is sometimes they get two points for stalling. But, um, man, <laughs> Connor held on. That's <laughs> so that was a pretty exciting match. We go to our next 149 match. Coming up is Anthony Rubio from Chabot and Joaquin Collister from Santa Ana. You know, down there in 4th and Bristol in Santa Ana, where I grew up. The Dons. So Rubio's at number And we'll one stay seat. on that side right now. So Rubio out of Chabot. The, the north mat, the Cuesta mat. We're, we do have two semifinals going at the same time, so we're moving back and forth. And right now we have Rubio and Collister. Collister out of Santa Ana, Rubio out of Chabot. Again, these guys were both earned bu first round buys after their regional places, so this is only their this is only their second match bout of the weekend. Oh, there's a nice. And right there, Rubio takes control of the match. They both have a takedown already in this first 50 seconds. So still very active. So Rubio and Collister, that's a number one seed and number four seed right now. You gotta wait for the whistle to move right there. Hand play placement is very on the belly button, on the elbow. guys are outside the mat, almost into the other ring. The calls are in Rubio. Callister with an early 3-2 lead for his escape. but taken down by Rubio and shoved off the mat. 
So another takedown by Rubio, and the lead is back to him. 4-3. A lot of action for the first period. In the south mount, we have Keanu Tom and Richard Miranda at 157 if we move our way up the weight class. But right now, we are focusing on Joaquin Collister from Santa Ana and Anthony Rubio from Chabot as we complete the 149 weight class. Again, an escape from Collister brings us back to 4-4. Rubio shoots. Collister takes a seat. And the takedown is awarded to Rubio. Some exciting matches in those other, uh, other uh, matches right now, too. So, uh. Again, 3CAA Wrestling will place out to the final eight, top eight places. The semifinals for the third place bracket are work on the far end of the gym. The championship semifinals are right here in front of us. Rubio and Collister at 149 and at 157 just started was Tom and Miranda. Richard Miranda from Santa Ana and Keanu Tom from Cerritos. And already I believe A.J. McKee won the other 149 bracket for Cerritos. I will see if we can confirm that in a moment. I think we both got wrapped up watching uh, Connor Pollock advance. <laughs> uh, it may be a little bit of a homerism there on the, on the part of the broadcast team. Uh, seeing Connor Pollock advance was great. Uh, fantastic first period for him, and he rode that all the way out. Again, four stalling points and a 10-5 or ten five victory or ten nine victory. Yeah, I'm going so. back to Connor's uh, final tonight now. So he's going to wrestle the uh, Sinclair from Mount Sac. And I'm just again, I'm going to try to research if that's who that match was in the regionals. Um. Another caution on red, not quite in the ready position. And there's the escape, and we're even again. Not a lot of room for errors in these matches. I mean, when you when you saw Paul jump out to a 10-1 lead in that last match, it was, it was pretty surprising. Uh, the 10-9 final was probably ex what you expected, just <laughs> not, yeah. not in the way it happened. Yeah, you said it. One, one throw, one takedown to, to their back could change the score tremendously or a pin. Yeah, so you need to wrestle... The complete match. So Rubio and Collister both standing on their feet. Collister takes his shot, but not not 100%. That was just to check to see where uh, Rubio was going to be if he took a shot. A feint. Still neutral as these two roll on the mat. Collister has a leg. Rubio has a leg. And Rubio breaks the <laughs> Collister's grip and moves into the top position for two more points, and he takes an 8 6 lead. He can convert that. Collister actually. Just on the edge of the mat here. And they call a stalemate. And a one point escape for Collister.
Actually, it looks like a... Seems to be a little bit of blood they got to clean up here before we can get going again. A lot of regulations on that. are getting attended to by Quest's own Anthony Geiger. Geiger's administering to a cut on Collister's face. And get that cleaned up, we can get him back into action here. Collister just got the escape. It's 9-7 or 8-7 right now. Nine seconds left in the second period. Looks like Collis is ready to go again. We'll finish at those last six seconds and then And that's the end of the second period. We go to third period. Only one point separates Rubio from Collister at this point. Writing time is not quite to a minute, so that will not be a factor unless Rubio can take control again. The winner of this will advance to face A.J. McKee from Cerritos in the finals. <laughs> quite the match over there, wasn't it, Pete? That other, that other match. And yeah, yeah Keanu, Keanu Tom Advances Cerritos, so we have another Cerritos wrestler in there. And coming up over there will be Adrian Gomez from Fresno City and Joseph Magdaleno from East L.A. That will be our next bout at 157. It's Collister on top right now. Erasing a little bit more of Rubio's riding time. Rubio will get one point right here with the escape eventually. All right. ESPN on local TV. Hey, Pete, the thing I like about this, the, the team dynamic comes through. You know, every match is just critical when you're talking, you know, points for your team at the end of the day. So Cerritos and you know, Fresno City, who are leading this right now, you know, every match is critical, even at those third and fourth, fifth and sixth places. But these semifinals are even bigger when you get someone to the finals. You when, know? You, when you are out in the match, you're, it's definitely your preparation versus the other guy's preparation, your skill versus that guy's skill. But you see how much emotional support you get from the teammates. You see these teammates are right on the edge of the match. Their coaches are holding them back <laughs> to keep them back. Yeah. As they, they do their very best to support their, 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 their teammates out there. It is, it, at this point, it does become a very much a team sport rather than an individual sport. Yeah. So again, Collister on top, a racing riding time, but he's going to have either, there he is, and there's the release. So now he needs a takedown. He's down by two with just about a minute left. Oh. But unfortunately, the takedown goes to Rubio, and it's 11-7 with 50 seconds left. So if Rubio can re just control here, and he releases... Releases, releases Collister. Collister gets an escape point.
So we have uh, 157 uh, 57 punters on the other mat that have begun. Um, and then Cuesta does have a uh, Joe Ells coming up at 165 here shortly. So right. uh, Joe Ells, our other semifinalist, will be uh, wrestling here soon. And um, he'll be at the next next one on that on that south mat. But right now we're watching Collister and Rubio see who's going to get to go, go against McKee. And Rubio seems to have control here with six seconds left and a 13-8 lead. Pretty much insurmountable. Rubio can stay on his feet for eight seconds. And he's doing a nice little dance there. <laughs> well, Chabot has someone going to the finals. And there, there it go. goes. Chabot's <laughs> Anthony Rubio advances to the finals with a 13-8 win over Joaquin Cullister from Santa Ana. So back over to the 157 coming up. Right now we have Adrian Gomez from Fresno City and Joseph Magdaleno from East L.A. And over here on our map that we're at right now. So here we have Adrian Gomez and Joseph Magdaleno. That might be as high as... Um, that, is, that is Peter Donoshev and Daniel Allen from Rio Hondo. Peter Donoshev from Palomar at the 165. They're doing the first bout for 165. The second bout at 165 will be Cuesta's Joe Els and Victor Pereira from Chabot, but we have to finish the 157 before we get to that, and then we have Adrian Gomez and Joseph Magdaleno. Gomez from Fresno City, again. Fresno City is currently one to enter today, one point behind uh, Cerritos for, for the top spot. And Joseph Magdaleno from East LA. I was gonna say, some of these, you know, here you may be seated one or two or three or four, but you know, there's a fine line between that sometimes. <laughs> It could be one match that uh, they split over the course of the year. And, and, and it's tough. It's, it's tough. This is a long season. It's tough to be 100% he healthy for every single single bout. Uh, you know, one bout can knock you down a little bit, and you come back a couple, couple minutes later in these tournaments, and you're, you're not 100% back. There's strains. There's pulls. And much effort and intensity these wrestlers put in daily both in the room and on the mat and the classroom yeah it's a it's a full schedule it's a lot a lot of intensity and a lot of not a lot of downtime hey wrestling is a long season too the, you know this is probably one of the of all of our fall sports has, has gone the longest if you think about it, our state championship right now you know finals weeks next week so <laughs> those kids are gonna have to crack the book tomorrow and yeah. as they have been but um it's a long season, and uh, so yeah, you're right. Yeah, These kids are in top shape, and yeah, the, the, you know, wrestling has. I, I think it's probably the, the better thing. Wrestling is a former, and in the NCAA level, it's a winter sport. Uh, but uh, and so they back it up as much as they can because if you get a wrestler in there in August, sometimes they're not quite ready. <laughs> they're, yeah. fr they're fresh off their summer break. You need a couple <laughs> couple weeks to get them going uh, before you can start sorting them out. And we know that we have we have a lot of people in the room those first few weeks. And, and uh, you got to cut. Yeah. you got to make some cuts. A lot of respect for these kids, though. They, I mean, it, this is a, a tremendous sport, hard sport, but, um, you know, the, the very well-conditioned athlete, very uh, uh, good athletes. And so much, so far, not much action here between Magdaleno and Gomez. And still no action. 0-0. Zero, zero. Again on the other match. We have Palomar's Donashev and Rio Hano's Allen. A little more decisive match at that point. As Allen has a 7-1 lead. And still no score over here in our 157 semifinal between Adrian Gomez, Fresno City, and Joseph Magdaleno. As we come into the final 30 seconds of the first period.
So on our near maps, we have the championship semifinals. Those wrestlers will advance to the championship bout this evening in the second session, championship session. We're in the semifinal session right now. On the far end of the gym is the third place bracket. Those wrestlers battling for third through eighth place here at the 2014 3C AA State Wrestling Championships here at Cuesta College in San Luis Obispo. And we have a reversal there. And Gomez takes control of the match, two points. So the first three minutes, both of them just feeling each other out to their points. Second, second period, Gomez stops on the bottom and gets a reversal on Magdaleno. And now has control of the, of the match. Working on top. Trying to break down Magdaleno. Magdaleno into a tripod. And he's a little bit too tall for Gomez to just throw. Uh, Gomez makes a move and... Magdaleno should get at least escape points and he's working for a takedown here. If he can get around, he cannot get around at this point. And Gomez retains control. No takedown. He had never lost it completely. So no points for Magdalena on that. And Gomez is still in control. As they inch towards the, <laughs> the third place match over there. And now they're going to be brought back to center. So Gomez, 21 seconds left in the second period. Still with a solid lead. Two points, he's got the only takedown and he's been using that, he got the first 10 seconds of this, of this period and he's been holding on to it the entire time. So still working on top on Gomez. And it's still 2-0 Gomez. Magdalena will take down. And Magdalena gets his escape. Now he's down by one point. On the other match, we've moved on to 174 with Micah Macias from Santa Ana and Zach Wally from Chabot. Both of them were top seeds, and they're only their second match of the day. They had earned first round buys yesterday. And we are still working over here on our mat, 157. Joseph Magdaleno, East LA, down 2-1 to Adrian Gomez from Fresno City. And we're in the final minute of that. It's still 2-1. One. one takedown by Gomez. One escape from Magdaleno. And they come back to center. That's 45 seconds of the bout. And coming up next, kind of what we're waiting for here at Cuesta College is Joe Els versus Victor Pereira. Cuesta versus Chabot to finish off the 165 bracket. The Cuesta Cougars currently in fourth place. So, already we, we have two wrestlers in the championship bracket today. Connor Pollock already advanced to the title, title match tonight. 
And we'd like to see Joe Ellis make it as well. Question fourth. Mount Sac third. Fresno City second. And ending the first day in first place was Cerritos. And a big cheer, great match at 174, our first 174 final. Zach Wally defeats Michael Macias from Santa Ana. And just in front of us right there, Adrian Gomez <laughs> battles it out for the 2-1 win over Joseph Magdaleno. Uh, he advances, he'll face Keanu Tom at the 157 final tonight. So Gomez and Tom, Fresno City and Cerritos, as so many of these matches have been today, um, working it out over there. All right, welcome again to the 2014 3CAA State Wrestling Championships here at Cuesta College in San Luis Obispo. This is the semifinal session of day two of the championships. Uh, right now we have on our mat, Cuesta's Joe Else versus Chabot's Victor Pereira, one of two Cuesta wrestlers in the finer, finals right now. Uh, after day one, Cerritos number in first place by one point over Fresno City. And then we have Mount San Antonio and Cuesta in fourth with a tie with Sacramento City. So here we go right now. Early takedown. <laughs> by Pereira of Chabot, Victor Pereira versus Cuesta's jo Joe Els. Joe redshirted last year, 2012 season. He was only 7-18 and 18 as a freshman. This year he leads the team with 25 wins. Uh, enjoying a great sophomore year. Uh, really used that redshirt year to his advantage. Uh, just a fantastic season for him right now. And here he is battling to get into the state final meet. Yeah. State final match. Right now, again, Pereira, the number one seed out of the north. Um, still battling with Els here. Els in a little bit of trouble. Els had two matches. He actually battled his way, beat the number one guy from the south yesterday to get to the get to this match but he is struggling now against Pereira Pereira in control is a 5-0 lead yeah Joe had a great quarterfinal last night uh, to get here today oh. and again you know Pereira only had one match yesterday he won by fall uh, Joe had to, had to win two decisions last yesterday go the distance twice and uh, that kind of kind of wears you out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, Pereira wrestled for a whole three minutes and thirty three seconds <laughs> yesterday, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> very early into the second period, and he gets a uh, else this time by fall. So Joe Else will fall into the third place bracket as Victor Pereira advances to the one sixty five title match against Daniel Allen of Rio Hondo. So Joe now is going to have a little bit of uh, some matches here to get back into the third place round. How probably a, a match this morning, uh, a couple of matches this morning, and get to the third place. Right, it's good. he's going to be back over there. Those final matches, he's going to, you know, that is a much tougher road to, to the to the medal on the far end of the gym right now. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these guys can go. You know, some of these championship guys go go three. If they go three and zero, oh, they win a title. Yeah, and you, you so said that conserving that energy. If you get a pin early on and have a bye, I mean, these kids are refreshed. And, and I mean, So on our mat right now is Fresno City's Mo Nasser and Mount San Antonio's Colton Martin. Also on the north mat going right now is Cerritos' Max Kumashiro and Logan Paxson from Sacramento City. And Mount Sachs right in that hunt too. They they were third right behind, uh, right in front of Cuesta. So um, again, these matches there's a lot on the uh, riding on these matches now for team points. Yeah, those top top five six teams, you know, from Chabot down, even even Palomar 33 and a half points. Uh, they're a little bit out of the title running unless they do something special today. But they are definitely definitely uh, in the medal running as a team, even in eighth place 33 and a half. Again. The, the, because of the dearth of, of programs for uh, wrestling at the community college level, there is so much talent on each of these rosters and so many hardworking, talented athletes. Mm -hmm. So this is 174 pounds? 
at 175.4 pounds right now. Mo Nasser, Fresno City, and Colton Martin, Mount San Antonio. Again, a couple of guys who only had one match yesterday. Again, on the far side, we have Logan Paxton from Sacramento City and Max Kumashiro from Cerritos at 184. We're working our way down to the uh, to the big guys. <laughs> <laughs> So got Nasser. Nasser in control. 4 1 lead. He has two takedowns and one escape for, escape for Martin. But we have an illegal hold. And the illegal hold was on Colton Martin of Mount San Antonio trying to break free. And so one more point given to Nasser. So penalty assessed on Colton Martin of Mount San Antonio. Mo Nasser up 5-1 here in the first period, about halfway through. Nasser maintaining his control. Significant lead at this point. Martin unable to break free at this point. Trying to get himself, pulls himself out of the, <laughs> out of the circle. Wait. So escape given to Martin. And it's now 5-2, Nasser. Uh, 30 seconds of that first period. And Nasser makes another shot. Martin escapes out, out of bounds and comes back in. And Nasser grabs a leg. Pulls him back in. The referee Doug Perrin stops, him, stops about for a moment. And both wrestlers back to the neutral position at the center. Fifteen seconds left in the first period. I think we'll see maybe one more shot here in the last ten seconds. And that's going to do it right here. Nasser makes a move. Just not enough time to get all the way around to, for the takedown. So he waited that shot a little bit too long. Still has a 5-2 lead for Nasser over Martin from Mount San Antonio. Now on top. <laughs> Racing a little bit of riding time right now. Martin's are back at least at least the even there, or no points will be assessed to Nasser for riding time, but Nasser shows a 5-2 lead. Martin's gonna have to work to get some back points here. And his stalemate brings him back to center.
Nasser trying to make a reversal right here, and he's going. He gets at least the escape and the reversal, it looks like. Gets the re full reversal. Interesting move right there, grabbing the leg and then swinging around, getting the arm, and getting Martin on the ground. And Nasser has control again, 7-2, with a minute left in the second period. Martin trying to break free. Nasser maintaining control. 15 seconds left in the first period. Martin gets to sit down, but then Nasser takes control again. Still on top. And that is the end of the second period. They go to the third period. Nasser seven. Martin two. Final period here. Nasser and Martin, both guys won their matches yesterday, about yesterday, by, by decision. But again, only one match needed to get to the championship semifinals if you're in the winning bracket. Nasser with another takedown. And he releases Martin as he's going to try and take another shot. And another takedown. Nasser is piling on the points at this point. And at 184 on the other mat, Max Kumashiro beat Logan Paxton of Sacramento City. He'll advance to the finals. And coming up for that will be Will Gockelfig from Fresno City and Alex Graves from Palomar. We got to see Fig wrestle here uh, earlier this year. Uh -huh. Very impressive wrestler. As Nasser completes his work of art here against, against Martin at 11 3. I'll probably give another escape here. 47 seconds left in his bout. And actually on the other side, it will be, we'll move to the 197. The Oscar Martinez of Cerritos and Jeremiah Girl, Girl of Cerritos. So Cerritos versus Cerritos. One of these guys is going to get knocked out. So Cerritos loses points right here. They'd love to have them in the opposite brackets, but having them in the same bracket in the semifinals means one of those is going to go to the third place bracket. So 197, two wrestlers from Cerritos. And Nasser with a 13-4 lead over Colton Martin. Looks like he will advance to face Zach Wally of Chabot. Wally had beaten Micah Macias of Santa Ana. Chabot's doing well right now, too. So that is your final. Nasser moves. He'll face Chabot. Chabot's... Uh, Zach Wally. And we'll stay over here with Fresno City in the north on the north mat. Fresno City versus Palomar. Alex Graves from Palomar and Will Gockelfig. Figgy from Fresno City. As the 197 started over the, again. Uh, it's a 0-0 match against, against two Cerritos wrestlers uh, at the south map. Oscar Martinez and 
Jay Garrell. Jeremiah Garrell. Again, two wrestlers very familiar with each other. See each other every day in in the mat in the mat room. As we complete our 184 bracket over here with Figgy versus Graves. Halfway through the first period. Fig and Graves scoreless. On the other end, the two Cerritos 197 pounders scoreless. Dan's filling up here in the semifinal session. All of these wrestlers will be back this evening as they place medal out to eight places. And we have our first takedown of, of the match. Knuckle Fig on top. Over there, conferencing with his coach, Paul Kesaw. We finally have a one-point lead over in the Cerritos match. And right now, Uncle Fig takes bottom, gets a reversal. And at the end of one, with four seconds left, a four-point lead.
An escape for Graves. And it's 4 1. Grave gets a hold of Gogglefig's head, and they get a release, and they're back to neutral. Big and Graves go outside the mat. Graves working his round could not get down the takedown, gain control, so they're back to neutral. And we have another blood issue. care of that. And 23 seconds left in the second period. Fresno City's Will Gockenfig. Four points. And Alex Gray's Palomar. One. Take down by Gockenfig. Release. Take down by Gockenfig. On the other side, the all Cerritos semifinal at 197 is now even at one. We'll stay here and complete the 184 bracket. Fresno City's Will Gockelfig. Palomar's Alex Graves. Graves currently trailing 4-1. Optional start right there by Graves, and he's got a hold of Goggle Fig. Goggle Fig does pick up the escape. And a 5 1 lead. 130 left in the match. Graves needs to shoot and take, get a takedown here. He does take a shot. Goggle Fig holds him off. Forty-eight seconds remaining. Graves needs to get some points here on Gogglefig, or Gogglefig will advance easily to the five-one lead with thirty seconds left.
We're after it. So Gockelfig completes the 1084 bracket. We'll have a Fresno City Will Gockelfig versus Cerritos Max Kumashiro, Kumashiro at 184. So there you go, Cerritos and Fresno City again. And we're still waiting to see who's going to win over there 197 for Cerritos. It's going to be either Cerritos or Cerritos, Garrow or Martinez. Martinez worked his way up yesterday by beating Ben Sira and then upsetting number one seed Mark Papish from Sacramento City. Garrow had an easier route. He beat Jonathan Fraser from Santa Ana and advanced straight to the semifinals. Yeah, at that stage in the game in the finals tonight, Pete, with a Cerritos-Fresno matchup, that could come down to the that, state title. That could title. come down to that match. But this is going to be an exciting match right here at 197. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, Jack Murphy's a dynamic wrestler from Bakersfield. Uh -huh. uh, we saw him beat Cuesta's Clayton Hartwell. Uh, Hartwell is one of the Cougars. He's the only freshman from Cuesta this year going to the state finals. Yeah. Uh, so exciting wrestler for us. Hopefully he'll have a great sophomore year. He uh, was stopped in this title uh Ambitions by Murphy. So Murphy right here with Keandre Johnson. Johnson won by fall and major decision yesterday. A couple of big bouts for, for Johnson as he upset Taylor Latour of uh, San Joaquin Delta and then Fred Durr, the seated wrestler from Santa Rosa, to advance. So yep. uh, both these wrestlers are, are wrestling very well. Yeah, good matchup right now. So this, yeah. is, this is at 197. This is where you, got, you have the strength and the size. Right here, and a little bit of the speed. I, it's always one of my favorite favorite weight classes. I have been 197 since I was in <laughs> high school, but uh, it's always a fun <laughs> The amount of size and strength these guys have. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You know, uh, our old uh, our old wrestling coach for 30 years, Gary Meisner, once told me there's there's three there's three really three weight classes in wrestling. There's there's cutting and hating it. <laughs> there's just at your regular weight, and there's fat and happy. And these guys, <laughs> if they're cutting and hated, they're at 184. If they're fat and happy, they're at 285. But if they're where they should be, they're at 197. That's always a fun fun uh -huh. fun division. Uh huh. So Murphy and uh, and Deon DeAndre Johnson here. Yeah, Jack okay. Murphy from Bakersfield, DeAndre Johnson from Mount San Antonio College. Uh, those teams came in here ranked. Uh, Mount San Antonio came after the first day third, Bakersfield ninth. Murphy was seated out of the south. Oh, there's a nice shot right there. And Murphy gets a takedown. Again, Murphy, Murphy is shorter but very heavily muscular. He's going to have a tough time throwing. Like we said that that length of Johnson is going to make it tough for him to throw, which he tried to do right there. But he's definitely in there. It's kind of the same matchup we saw earlier with uh, Connor Pollock and Isaiah Alva. Uh -huh. Length versus strength. Not to say that Johnson isn't a very strong individual <laughs> himself. But, uh -huh. but Murphy is two points. Johnson with the escape, so it's 2-1. This match over here, Pete's finishing up. Cerritos, Cerritos won. wins over Cerritos. <laughs> they went into overtime. Uh, those guys getting every second that they can, can get a, with each other on the mat this year. Uh, so we went to 285, and as Johnson and Murphy move out of bounds, our next match will be Cerritos's on the south end. Will be Cerritos's Jesse Gomez and Mount Sachs. Uh, Andrew Cruz. Interesting thing about the um, this bracket right here. Both these guys have, have were, uh, were did not receive buys yesterday, so this is their third match of the weekend already. Um, you know, we oh, haven't yeah. had too many upsets, and these guys both pulled upsets to get into this match. So on the heavyweight side, that's going to be a nice battle right there of, of of two guys who were unseated or not did not earn a buy into the, this tournament. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're seated very high, but not in the top four out of 12. 
So another escape right there for Johnson, and we're even 2-2. Shot by Murphy. Murphy just can't seem to get Johnson off the ground. But he drags him down anyways. Yes. But not long enough. Mur Johnson recovers. And they're and just Murphy just having a tough time getting the, the longer Johnson to the ground. Mm. Now he's got him up. Whoa. And again, Johnson gets his feet down. But not before Murphy scores two points. Both, both wrestlers lose their, lose their headgear. And it's 4-2 Murphy. Murphy's definitely been the more aggressive wrestler. He's, he's been going for shots almost every, ch every chance he gets. Yeah, so Johnson was not even seated, right? You're saying that in this uh, match? Jo Johnson, Johnson ended up beating, winning two matches yesterday. Yeah. Uh, knocking off the, the seated seed, Fred yeah. Dewar from uh, Santa Rosa to advance. So like I said, not, not a lot of upsets. A, a, a match a day or two matches a day do, does make a big difference for these guys. And uh, Murphy working on his second match of the, of the weekend. One yesterday, when now this is his first match of the day. And Johnson's first match of today, but he had two yesterday. So it's a long day. But it's a lot easier in this bracket. <laughs> Again, 3-0 and gets you a state title. Or in this case, if it's for Johnson, working his way out of, an un, uh, out of a, uh, having to wrestle the first round, it would be a 4 0. Eighteen seconds left in the second period. Murphy four. Johnson three. Third period. Here we go. It's going to be an interesting uh, finish here. Both these guys have, have a great opportunity here. As we talked about it, the 197 Martinez had advanced to wrestle his own teammate, Garrell. So we had two upsets at the, at the uh, 197 pounds. One escape. The escape Up right five there. Three. And it's 5-3 Murphy. So Johnson's looking for a takedown. <laughs> He's definitely going to get a takedown here. Oh. Trying to control the head right there. If he can snap Johnson, he can get to the legs. Johnson keeping those legs back, keeping his balance. And Murphy's got him. Got his arms locked right now. He's not in a position where he can really release and get to Johnson's legs. And both wrestlers slide out of bounds. One minute. The final minute. Johnson needs a takedown. He needs two points quick. And he needs to keep that right. Oh. Now. But he did, took a shot. And that's going to end it for him right there. Murphy got the takedown right there. Now he's got to look Gives for a the throw of some sort. So now he's down three. 30 seconds left. Murphy countered well on that shot and turned it into a two points for himself and kind of can clinch the, clinch the match as much as you can if he can stay on his feet. Yeah, see, now he's going to kind of look for a throw to put him to his back. Ooh. But I think uh, Murphy's a little too strong. 
He's trying to use that upper body strength, and that's where Murphy's, Murphy has him a little bit, I think. So 14 seconds left. Jack Murphy, Bakersfield, looks like he's going to advance. He has a 7-4 lead of Keandre Johnson of Mount San Antonio College. Renegade. That's a good match. Great and match. And that's your final right there. So Murphy advances. He'll wrestle one of the <laughs> Cerritos wrestlers at 197. That'll be Oscar Martinez, who won an overtime over his teammate Jeremiah Garrell. That's, that's a fascinating thing right there. So you have Martinez, who wrestled all season long, and Garrell uh, <laughs> in the room and, and every regional, every, mm -hmm. every tournament. And here he is at state championships, works his way through Chabot, knocks off number one Popish, then knocks off his teammate to get to the state finals. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So nice move by Murphy. Uh, it, Martinez to, to advance to the finals. He'll face Jack Murphy from Bakersfield, and that should be a battle. So we're down to our last two heavyweight battles. In front of us right now, Robert Chisholm of Cerritos. He's the all... All-State center for the Falcons football team and Andrew Singer, Fresno City. Both these guys earned first-round buys yesterday. Uh, Singer advanced on a major, major, major victory, major decision. Chisholm by fall after two minutes and 31 seconds. And Chisholm takes down Singer, and he has his first two points. On the other side, we have two upset wrestlers. Jesse Gomez, another Cerritos wrestler, who defeated both Timothy Mc McCulloch from San Joaquin Delta on a 2-0 decision and then knocked off Jimmy Dawson, uh, the number one guy of the North, uh, with a 3-2 decision. So Gomez advances. Uh, right now he's against Andrew Cruz, who beat Sh Sh Chumkur Dalwal of Chabot and then knocked off the seated Javier Gonzalez of Rio Hondo. So both those guys working over there on their third bouts of the day, uh, Gomez and Cruz, both at victories over here. They'll be facing two of the best wrestlers, either Singer or Chisholm. Chisholm again, 2-1 lead. He let go of Singer. So Singer got the escape points, 2-1. There might be a lot riding on this, these two heavyweights right here. Can you imagine getting two Cerritos kids in the finals? And when we're talking about the fine right. line between the state scoring. Um, I, I, it's almost, almost a clinch at that point, I, I think. They had that one-point lead. They've, they've got two wrestlers going... You know, mm -hmm. they seem to have a wrestler in almost every weight class. <laughs> hey, although Fresno City has the 125 pounder starting them that's that true. night they, off. That's true. They have the Fresno kids. two Fresno City kids. So it's <laughs> well, heavyweights 285. That's the limit, right? You cannot yeah, be over 285. Cannot be over 285. So. So they might have to cut weight. <laughs> Some people might have to cut weight, huh? Well, you know, as, as offensive lineman there, as, as Chisholm is, you know, he 285 is, is sometimes considered light. Maybe not the community college level, but other levels. But it's nice to have a big athlete. So after these two so semifinal bouts, we uh, we kind of break down the gym and then head into the, the awards uh, bracket, the Constellation, third and fourth, fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth. Right. Well, we'll have, have the, the gym will break down. We'll go and do uh, take a little break and come back for the medal round later tonight. You said this young man from Cerritos played uh, football. So did he dual play or maybe played last year or what? Cause well, he came out this year, well, made, earned All-State. And, and uh, according to uh, John Van Gessen, the, year, the sports information director down there, director of athletic communications. Because they're both the same season, you know? Maybe he... Oh, I'll have to, we'll have to do a little bit more research.
again, it's kind of one of those things in community colleges. The, the seasons are off from, from the uh, NCAA. Uh -huh. you know? So it's kind of one of those things is where we have wrestling as, as a fall sport, swimming as a spring sport, and all those other things, and mix matching the... The seasons here. So we do have our first advancer. It looks at least like Cerritos will have one wrestler in the finals for the heavyweight division. There's such a contrast between the heavyweights and those first ones we started <laughs> off today with 125 pounders. You see the action and the activity, right. and now you know these matches tend to tend to be kind of a. Well, you get one guy going one way, and you're in real trouble. So Chisholm here, uh, trying to finish off his bout so he can meet his teammate in the finals. He has a 2-1 lead here as we are in the third period, final minute. And Singer just trying to trying to get something done here. Back to the second period. Final 30 seconds. Balance is so important, especially at this heavyweight division. So one more division here, one more. Two minutes left. Chisholm will take down, Singer on top. Chisholm up 2-1. His teammate, Jesse Gomez, just advanced over Andrew Cruz of Mount San Antonio to the finals. So we could be looking at another all Cerritos final. And Chisholm trying to get his way, and he does. So one point escape for Chisholm. He has a 3-1 lead. A minute 30 left. Quick visit. Uh, Quest's medical staff, Dr. Andrew Devine. He is a great guy. Great guy. So here we go, third period, huh? Third period. He did my knee. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm sure a lot of people in this gym. <laughs> And we're down to minute 15. The one point escape from Chisholm after slowing down. So Dr. Vine here, he'll be working with uh, Questos Athletic Trainers training staff, Brittany Bauer and Anthony Geiger. We've seen Geiger out there already uh, plugging noses and, and uh, Wap wiping up blood. He's out there. He's, he's keeping a close eye on this match. You can see him on the far side of the of the uh, of this match. So 30 seconds left. Singer needs needs a takedown right now, right away. Or Chisholm is going to advance. We're going to have a all Cerritos Falcon finals at the heavyweight division. Again, we'll do a quick rundown. This is the final match of the semifinals, championship semifinals, with 27 seconds left. Singer needs a takedown. Chisholm's going to just hold him up and keep his legs back and make sure that Singer can't take a shot. And I think you're going to see Singer go here in a second. And there he goes. Chisholm holds him back. And that's going to do it, I think, for Singer as Chisholm has a leg hold. And then Chisholm takes the takedown, and that's going to do it for him. 5-1 at the buzzer. Chisholm moves in to the finals against his teammate, Jesse Gomez. So here's our, our roundup for today. Coming up tonight at the finals at the 125 division, we have Adrian Camposano from Fresno City versus Arnolfo Olea of Fresno City. At 133, it's Dustin Kirk from Cerritos and 
Alberto Garcia of Palomar. At 141, Quest's own Cor Connor Pollock and Mount San Antonio's Terrell Sidner. At 149, Chabot's Anthony Rubio and Cerritos' A.J. McKee. At 157, Cerritos' Keanu Tom and Sorry about that, Fresno City's uh, Adrian Gomez. So Adrian Gomez and Keanu Tom at 157. At 165, Chabot's Victor Pereira and Rio Hondo's Daniel Allen. At 174, Chabot's Zach Wally and Fresno City's Mo Nasser. At 184, we have Cerritos' Max Kumashiro and Fresno City's Will Gacklefig. 197, Baker Shields' Jack Murphy, and Cerritos' Oscar Martinez. And at 285, we'll have Jesse Gomez and <laughs> Robert Chisholm, both from Cerritos. So that does it here for this morning session. The semifinal session here Saturday morning at the 2014 3C AA State Wrestling Championships. I'm, I, I'm Peter Schuler, and here with Bob Mariucci. And we'll be back here later for the state finals. So thank you very much for joining us here in San Luis Obispo at Cuesta College for the 3CAA State Wrestling Championships. Thank you, Pete.